Well, good morning. Sir, good to have you and the baby here today and all you visitors. Thank you. You know, today we're going to be talking about our accountability, but I kind of want to go back just a few years. Well, for some of us, it's been more than a few years, but and uh, and everything. But whenever you were younger and you were still living at home and and you were underneath your parents' roof and you were doing what they've asked and requested of you to do, we had a certain responsibility and a, and a certain accountability back then. And whenever we accepted that role um, from our parents as children, we um, we had like a little reverence there. So whatever your parents did, most of the time, or whatever your parents requested of you, you did. Clean your room up. You cleaned your room up. Now, the difference is, is now that you're an adult, there's a different definition of cleaning your room up. All right. When you were younger, cleaning your room up meant, you know, let's just straighten up. Let's just get it to the point where my parents will get off my back. But now that I'm a parent and I tell my kids, hey, clean the room up, it takes on a whole different definition. All right? Beds are made. Food is picked up and thrown in the garbage. Bathrooms are clean. Things like that. It's just a different definition now that I'm older. But there's always been accountability. And the older you get, it seems like the accountability is more, how can you say, more costly, okay? Because now, as a father, as a grandfather, as a pastor, as someone just older, my accountability is held to a different standard. My accountability to my family is one thing that's on a whole different level my accountability to the church is yet on another accountability so I want you to keep in mind today let's try to get everything just bundled up in one all right all the way from the kids to the adults because what we want to do is we want to say hey my accountability in this area isn't the same as it is in this accountability but let me tell you, your accountability in church is the same accountability that you have towards your kids, towards your work, towards everything. Because if you're doing it for God, and that's what we need to get on the mindset, we need to be held accountable to God. All right? We need to make sure that what we're doing, first of all, is of God. And I'm reminded of our blessing box. Um, it's kind of taking a back burner in a sense. Now there is just one gentleman that is very faithful on making sure that that is supplied. But as overall, as the church participate, it's kind of gotten pushed back to the back burner you got to keep it renewed. So I'm challenging y'all to hold this church, that person, and yourself accountable to make sure that what God has started, we continue. When God gave me children, He didn't just give them to me for five years or 18 years. He gave those children to me for a lifetime. So my accountability towards those kids will never end. It will never end. And I'm re reminded with my parents. To the day they died, they continued to pray and held themselves as well as us kids accountable for what we did and how we did it. And I can rest assured and I can proudly say it was always a godly way. So I'm going to take you to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verse 12 through 16. But let me just give you a little background. This is Paul. 
He's kind of um, Timothy's spiritual mentor. And they're communicating back and forth with letters because guess what? They didn't have texts and they didn't have cell phones and then they didn't have the U.S. mail. All right. So communication was a little slower, but yet very meaningful. All right. In 1 Timothy 4th chapter, verse 12 through 16, I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. 12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which has been given to you through prophecy and, to, and through the body of the elders, Led their hand, that laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. See how we're building up on being accountable? Watch your life and doctrine closely. Preserve them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Hold me accountable. I'm holding you accountable. God is holding us accountable. There's no longer a brother Robert. There's no longer a brother uh, uh, brother Smith or a brother Jones or a sister uh, Hannah or whatever. There is you, the world, and God. We have enemies out there. We can't afford to fight amongst ourselves. We cannot afford to let just the little bit of strife and envy and, and, and discourse among the people. If I've offended you, I apologize. If anyone in this church has offended anyone, rest assured God is dealing with them. And they are sending their apologies. But let me tell you, we need a fresh start. We need to hold each other accountable for what God needs done. Not only in our lives, but in this community. Alright? When we get our minds off ourselves and we get our minds on other people, God works miracles that way. God works His finest that way. God's going to take care of me. God will take care of you. Now, what are you going to do? You've got that promise that God's going to take care of you. We have a family that I'm aware of, and someone and another family came to me. This is, this is where we hold each other accountable. When people are in need, we need to help. Well, we don't have that much money. We don't have that much food. We don't have that much resource. People, let me tell you, we serve a God that's endless. All right? Right? Prayer is great. It is. But prayer sometimes is not going to feed that family tonight. And what I mean by that is, is if you hide behind, well, I'm going to pray for you. All right. Faith without actions is dead. I'm sorry. It is. If you see a family in need, let's help them. I have not talked to my board about this. But right now, my church, God's church, us, there is a family in need, and that family does not need to be mentioned at all. But I, for one, am requesting that this church, for the next six months, will donate ten sheets of sheetrock and one box of five-gallon mud for the next six months. Amen. This church. Well, you can do more. It's not about doing more or doing less. It's about being consistent, making sure people understand that we're here for the long run. We're not just here for one bound, thank you, and let's move on to the next. 
When people are in need, we need to come together. We had something yesterday. We were, uh, and I'm not embarrassed to say this, John and I were helping uh, another family in this church move something. All right. If fear comes in, in the least expected time, so we're coming back from Koontz, coming down 1122, headed over here by the church in this community to fulfill what a great ministry we have helping people. All of a sudden, you see smoke coming from left side, driver's side of what we're towing. All right. And I don't know about you. All right. But I'm a pretty prayed up guy. I'm a pretty upbeat guy. I don't think negative. You know, so what? See a little smoke. Maybe the tire got too hot. All right, but I'm in a company truck, okay? And I have permission to do what I need to do with that company truck. But fear hit me immediately because of what we were towing. What if the whole thing caught on fire? And you've seen those car fires where things catch on fire and then all of a sudden everything is on fire and there's no, you're just sitting on the side of the road watching it burn. I'm not going to lie, that fear came into me. <laughs> and you should have seen me scrambling for a fire extinguisher, which our company requires us to carry one in the truck. But I want you to know that whenever you're in the middle of blessing someone, if you don't watch it, Satan can come in and just plant that fear. So whenever we go to help someone, Satan's definitely going to step in. All right? Well, it doesn't seem like 10 sheets of sheet, sheet rocks very much. Okay? But this man and his family, they're a working family. All right? And everybody in this church works, works, works. All right? So why don't we just buy 100 sheets and just get it over with? Well, first of all, you've got to find a place to store it. All right? And then, whenever you look at a hundred sheets, you're thinking, oh man, I'm never going to get this up. But if you just get a little bit at a time, and you work on that, isn't this the way God works? Just a little bit of time, all right? We're not out to save the whole world all at one time, but all it takes is ten sheets at a time. And then you've got other people that wants to donate, I know that, because they came to me. It's not, about, it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. A little bit at a time. And before you know it, you know what? You're invested in blessing a family. And just imagine, whenever that house or that building or that office is complete, all right? Yes, that family will be excited, but you will too because you can see the end product. You can see that the walls are complete. You can see that the sheetrock is done and it's done great and a family is enjoying it. That's just awesome to me. But so many times because we don't hold each other accountable for what we do, Let's just think, why wouldn't you want to be held accountable? Why wouldn't this church want to be held accountable for helping people? Well, for one thing, whenever you want to not be accountable for something, chances are you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Or you're not doing what you should be doing. Two separate things. Two separate things. Every Sunday, you hold me accountable to get up here and preach. Every quarter, the board holds us responsible for what we did. But who is holding you responsible for what you're doing? Well, Brother Robert, I give my tithes and offering. 
Well, I don't know if you realize this, but that's the least this church worries about. We never ask for tithes. We never ask for offering. What we do ask is to get excited, be part of blessing people. You know, if this, if this church doesn't have a dime in the bank, but every week, every month, every quarter, we're blessing someone. What do you think God would do with a bank account today? Honestly, what would Jesus do with a bank account today? <laughs> but you know what most of the time I don't want money and if the truth is known you don't either alright yes times are tough sometimes it's hard to get extra groceries it's, it's hard to pay that electric bill and get something extra but we all survive I mean just look at us we're all here today for a reason and I'm sure if you can look at each one of our lives, there's a need in every life. Let's not look at the big picture. Let's just take the one little gift of 10 pieces of sheetrock. Let's get that hung. Let's get that done. It's over. Now it's time for another 10 pieces. Let's get those 10 pieces done and complete it's kind of like and I know you women get mad at me at this but I'm one of those guys bless my heart I know that whenever women complain about their weight all right I can't get away from this all right there's some new people that haven't heard this and if they have just forgive me okay women are so concerned about their weight so what I do is I tell them, okay, there's 52 weeks in a year. Not going to change, never has, never will. 52 weeks, all right? And most of these women only want to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds at the most, all right? Realistically. So if you lost one pound or even a half a pound every week for a solid year, all right. Instead of complaining for 52 weeks that I'm too, I'm 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 a little overweight. All right. Instead of complaining, just set your goal at a half a pound a week. I'm going to lose a half a pound a week or a pound a week. Well, brother, see, y'all are already thinking of excuses to tell me why I can't do this. No, no, no. One pound a week. All right. So, in one year from today. If you set with that schedule, you would be 52 pounds lighter. Or at the very least, you would be 25 pounds lighter. That's all I'm saying right now. Let's realistically look. God is not asking us to win the whole world at one time. But let's win one family. Let's win a community. One household. Let's do something. We're going we're gonna to spend time in this world. We might as well accomplish something for God and not for ourselves. But as you realize this and as you... And, and don't keep this a secret. We want to be so humble that we don't want anyone to know. You know what? If other people knew that you were blessing, maybe they would want to join in too. All right? I'm not here to brag that this church gives, but you know what? I want the community to know that this church gives. And not only to the people within the church, but we give to the community. I think that speaks more volume than us having 200 people in a congregation and we have 30,000 in the bank. Because faith without works is dead. Money is being spent, food is being eaten and taken and, and blessing people. But what are we seeing? 
How many of us know where that, that food, where the food of the blessing box is going? It's going to people in this community because I don't know about you, but you can, you can not really spy, but you can kind of hang out and you can watch people come up on feet, on bicycles. I, I don't even know what those little carts, medical carts, I call them Walmart carts, what have you. You know, Scooter. scooters. They come up and they are using that blessing box. But for, our, for whatever reason, it may be that we don't want to embarrass them, legitimate. But why can't we just say, hey, what else can we do for you? Is there anything else we can do? I mean, the worst they can say, all right, is just pray for me. Now, I made a gesture earlier about just praying. I don't know about you. You asked Sister Deborah about this question. That's like gold. All right? Take that very serious. Some of us, whew, that was close. I thought they were going to ask for money. All they're asking for is prayer. Jesus is hot out there. They're asking me to go over there and mow their yard. Whew, I'm glad they're just asking for prayer. People, we've got to care. And not that y'all don't. And this is just a, if anything, it's more of a refresher for me. Alright? Because I'm truly blessed. I've got a granddaughter that I'm her world sometimes. Unless her friends are over. i got a church family that really loves me. And honestly, I think y'all would do anything for me. So do this for me. Have a desire. Have a heart to help the community. Have a heart to just take a small piece of someone's need and try to fulfill it. Ten sheets of sheetrock. I don't know about you, and I don't even know how much it, it, it costs or however many sheets it takes to do a whole household. But I know that you can't do it all at one time, and it takes time, especially whenever that family's working and we're all working. But if we look at the big picture and we think, God, we just can't do it. Think of the weight loss. All right? If we would have done 10 sheet rocks a year ago, that would have been, what, 500 sheets? That's a pretty big house we could have done. Rest assured, you know what? We may not have stopped at one house. We may have went to another one. I don't know about you, but there's lots of houses that uh, can use 10 sheets of sheetrock. A shed that someone needs to put that lawnmower in so they can mow their own yard. A spare bedroom because, you know what? We're outgrown this house and we need an extra bedroom. It's just the little things. That's all it takes. Just the little things. But it all starts with caring. With a heart that wants to help people. Not to embarrass them. Not so they owe us something. I don't know about you, but we don't require whoever we help to come to this church. We don't require them to sit in Sunday school, come to youth. We don't even require them to give a love offering. But we're held accountable. We're held accountable. Just think of the next scripture that I'm going to read. Matt, if you can go ahead and pull that up. We're going to pull up Romans 14. Verse 11, it says, It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, Every knee will bow before me. <laughs> this is what gets me. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say Christian. It simply says every knee. Every knee. Not just the people in this church. Every knee. And every tongue will acknowledge God. So that's why I don't worry about atheists very much. I don't worry about people that speak bad about me. Because one day, and I will be a witness... 
I will hear them, I will hear them say, you are Lord. I was wrong. But I do want to be able to stand in front of my Lord and say, Lord, I love you. I mean, truly, isn't that what we all need? <coughs> Tim needs love. John, sis, Brother Roger. Everybody, we just need love. My sister, bless her heart, she's been stuck with me for 55 years. 55 years with me. Can you imagine that, Brandon? 55 years with me. That's a long time of crazy, stupid, fun, laughter, crying, and everything. 55 years she's been with me, and I with her. It hasn't always been in church. Sister Deborah, Brother Bill, two people that I admire more than anyone. I've seen them whenever they, oh, they had a chance to leave. I've seen them whenever God has truly blessed them. I've seen their home taken away. I've seen God restore it. I've seen sickness that almost took lives. I've seen sickness come in and get totally destroyed in their lives. But rest assured, I see them serving my Lord every Sunday. When we walk out that door today, just imagine everyone in this neighborhood standing out there looking at us. And they each say this to each one of you. I need your help. That's what they're saying. That's what the city of Silsby is saying to us. You think every church and every pew in these churches are completely full today? They're not. They're empty. There's probably more at the lake today than there is inside the church. Now, don't get me wrong. We need vacations. We need time away. All right. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking people that would rather do that than be held accountable. But we can't look at it as a burden or an unjust thing towards us. We should be glad that God is holding us accountable for what needs for his work we should be happy that we get up here and sing the song I should be happy every Sunday that I have the ability to get up here and spread God's word you have the ability to come in here and make people feel comfortable you have the ability to make people feel important I know this is an unusual message, and I told my sister whenever she came in here, it wasn't going to be very long, and I have no clue as to what it was going to be. But I will tell you this. Hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. God is holding me accountable and God's holding you accountable. But because God is not here all the time, He's not in your face, and it sometimes seems like there's no consequences for our action, that does not change the fact that God is holding you accountable for things. You may be able to fool me. You may be able to fool this church and this community, but we cannot fool God. 
That's why. Ten sheets of sheetrock. One box of mud. Not very much. But my God, it's something. And if six months from now, I can't wait to get with that family and them tell us how much progress God has done to make their house a home. I'm excited about it. I really am. I hope this family is excited about it. I hope, I hope this community gets excited about it. I hope something doesn't happen. <laughs> Smoke comes out and you're scrambling to unhitch a, a trailer from your truck so you don't have to explain to your bosses why you burnt their truck up. Even though it's small, Satan is going to do everything to destroy this. But let's stay focused. God wants to bless this family. And comes hell or high water, this church will bless this family. And they will see something completed. Not by us, but by their Savior and their Lord. I don't want this church to get credit for it. I want my Lord to get credit for it. But I want my church to be a part of it. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Because when we finish with that family, God's going to send us another family. And then after that family, God's going to send us another family. So if you're worried about money, you're worried about food, God's got this. God's got this. Willing vessel. All it takes. I don't know about you, but I've been involved in church my whole life for the most part, and God has never ran out of money. I know about you, but I never ran out of food. And the way you women talk about weight, apparently y'all haven't either. I'm going to get in trouble for that, sis, and I'm going to blame that on you. All right? Okay. But 52 pounds a year is realistic. Ten sheets of sheetrock, box of mud, that's realistic. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is going to get involved, whoo, and there's going to be more than ten sheets of sheetrock. Amen. All right? There's going to be more than just sheetrock. There's going to be windows. There's going to be nails. There's going to be screws. There's going to be a lot of things. But we've got to get something started, and we've got to get something started now. Y'all stand.